and welcome to the Amplifying Scientific Innovation video podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Sophia Onoye, founder and CEO of the Sophia Consulting Firm, a global scientific storytelling consultancy that was founded in New York City and reestablished in California with a mission of amplifying scientific innovation through human intelligence and AI. The goal of this podcast is to showcase the global impact of scientific innovations and illuminate the brilliant innovators and leaders who are advancing humanity daily through their purpose and influence. Today's episode officially marks the season five debut of Amplifying Scientific Innovation, and I can't think of a better way of celebrating five years and five seasons than with my two guests today. First, and for the first time in the show's history, I am happy to feature a multi-talented musician, singer, and dancer, Max McCarthy. Max began her musical arts pursuit as a four-year-old studying Irish dancing, and today she's a patient advocate, and I cannot wait for her to share her creative insights on how songwriting can help patients to express gratitude and hope. Now, my second guest is no stranger to the show, as he was featured back in November 2020 in season two of the series. But I remain a huge fan of his work and his impact in the cell and gene therapy space. Dr. Bruce Levine is a Barbara and Edward Netter professor in cancer gene therapy and the founding director of the Clinical Cell and Vaccine Production Facility at the University of Pennsylvania. He's also the co-founder of Timunity Therapeutics, a pen spin-out. Amongst many significant accomplishments, Dr. Levine is the co-inventor of the first FDA-approved gene therapy, commercially known as Kimraya, which is a chimeric antigen receptor T cell, or CAR-T, for leukemia and lymphoma that is licensed to Novartis. Dr. Levine has also written for Scientific American and Wired, and is dedicated to training the next generation of scientists, public outreach, and expanding global and equitable access to advanced therapies. Welcome to the show, Bruce and Max. Thank you, Sophia. So great to be with you and with Max. Oh, it's my show. pleasure. Thanks very much, Sophia, for having me on your show. And it's my pleasure. I'm happy to speak with you. I told you I was super excited about today. So <laughs> my first question for all my guests, including you, Max, is what is your definition of scientific innovation? Wow. Well, listening to all what Bruce has done there really has um, nailed it all. But um, especially me, I don't know much about science or, or in the medical world, but I'm, I'm learning. And um, I suppose I would think that when it comes to science innovations, coming up with maybe new methods or new treatments or maybe an easier way to do something, it's always starts maybe like music, you come up with an idea. And maybe Bruce, it probably is the same in science. You come up with some sort of an idea and um, it evolves and sometimes sometimes doesn't work and sometimes it does. And very much like music, you can write a hundred songs and sometimes, it, you know, you might get one good one or so. Yeah, well, I don't know much about science, but that's the best I could come up with. <laughs> well, it, it's about impact, right? Ultimately, and that's what you're talking about. You could write a lot of songs, but there are some songs like Ring That Bell that truly make an impact. <laughs> Not wait for us to talk about it. And Dr. Levin, the last time you were here, you defined scientific innovation as forging new paths, going into the unknown. Innovation is exploring what we need to explore to be able to devise new therapies for patients. Now, how has your definition of scientific innovation evolved since COVID-19 five years ago? Well, Sophia, all of that is still true. Uh, I think I'll add that science generates evidence essential to the interest of humanity. Science develops new therapies for disease. Science saves lives. Science generates economic growth. And in these days, we need to uh, bring forth a message that supporting science is a matter supporting science is a matter of national and global interest. Oh, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. So I was born in Nigeria and West Africa. I've lived in different parts of the U.S. But to me, the message around innovation is truly universal. And I can't wait for us to talk more about that. Now, getting back to you, Mags, can you tell me the inspiration for Ring That Bell? And do you have plans for other songs that can help cancer patients express gratitude and hope? Well, actually, Ring That Bell, 
I suppose it kind of came as an accident, really. Um, um, someone very close to me got diagnosed with uh, blood cancer and I got to meet Bruce through that. And um, I was always very interested in how the immune system works and T-cells. And I really probably wrecked the poor man's head over the years um, trying to learn more and more about it. And Bruce had a very big interest in songwriting and how to construct the song and when um, he visited Ireland, we were we were just decided we'd start um, writing a song, and he had put in about CAR T cell therapy, and we we just said okay, we'll write a song about CAR, um, CAR T cell, and um, I showed him how you know you construct a, a chorus and then it works around. Now sometimes it works differently. You can construct a verse, or you can take chords and try to write over chords. Everything's different, but um, yeah, we're we're in the car. And, we weren't long, Bruce. We came up with the chorus, and I had all his experts of uh, about car T cell, and um, but it it wasn't that it was a challenging song to write. It's probably one of the most challenging, difficult songs I've ever written because I was dealing with things that I, I had no clue about. You know, car T cell. I mean, um, a couple of years ago, if you asked me anything about blood or you know even a hemoglobin or whatever, I wouldn't. I would just genuinely wouldn't know. But I, I've learned a lot and. I find it fascinating and I find the whole thing fascinating. But to write the song, it's very special. Um, I saw the story about Emily Whitehead. I saw what they've done, uh, what uh, Bruce's team, everyone back in Penn had done. And I just think it's fascinating, phenomenal what work they're doing. And I admire them so much, all the doctors around the world, doctors, nurses, um, that treat patients every day and, you know, ring that bell. Obviously, the significance about ringing that bell and what it's mean to patients right across the world about trying to get there. And, you know, there's always that fear, you know, you ring the bell, okay, so you ring the bell and is that the last bell? Or, you know, there's always that fear for families and patients. And yes, uh, you call me a patient advocate, I suppose. Yeah, I, I do the best I can, but deep, deep down, I'm just a musician and a singer and, um, you know, but I admire everything that you all do. And it has inspired me and I haven't written another song or connect another song to yet, but that doesn't mean I won't write one in the future. But um, the song, hopefully, um, the songs I've written in the past have touched a lot of people's lives. And I think that this song is very special and it hits home to a lot of people. And um, I'm just very, I think we're all very grateful to the science, to the doctors that um, who, who are saving lives. And, you know, we all go get up every morning. We do the best we can in life. And if we can do something good in life just for one person and be happy, and see people happy and uh, it's everything they, your health is your wealth and uh, you know you can have everything but if you don't have your health so I admire uh, Bruce and all of you for what you do and thank you so much no extremely well said I just wanted to correct you you are indeed a patient advocate you are speaking of for patients and finding creative ways for them to express gratitude and hope now I wouldn't be good at my job if I didn't ask for a little sample maybe a chorus like one line just to hear your voice and ring that bell oh you want me to sing it yeah just <laughs> I, a little bit like <laughs> well uh hey, hey, hey. Ain't afraid of no cancer cell. These car T warriors break the spell. Reprogram to recognize the foe. Watching tumors wither and go. Got a missile, a car T cell. A living drug to ring that bell. That's the chorus. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love that. I, I love that. That was that was beautiful. I'm a huge music connoisseur and I love people like you that find ways to intersect because that's what innovation is. We bring different bits from all over the world. We bring it together and we advance humanity. Now, I, I'm curious about Dr. Levin, the scientist who is now <laughs> the songwriter. I would love to, to hear more about you and sort of how, you know, patients can play a role in, in physician connectivity. How would physicians and educators become more creative in their approach to patient engagement and maybe what role could AI even play in fostering that interaction between patients and physicians, scientists and, and patients for the future? Well, you know, this started as a crazy experiment and sometimes crazy experiments take on a life of their own uh, with or without AI. Um, 
But I think together we made this very personal. We wanted to tell the story of CAR T from the patient advocate perspective, uh, and that's what it became. And more broadly, I think scientists have to recognize the importance of communicating and communicating in different ways. Uh, recent national policies and public attitudes towards science indicate we failed to make the case for the importance of our work of transformative innovation and that scientists must advocate. And what this requires is storytelling in a different way, uh, the courage to speak up and collective resolve. It also requires that patients and patient advocates become more visible. We're natural and necessary allies, so let's work together to amplify each other's voices, right? Yes, yes, extremely well said. So I'm a member of the Harvard Business Review Advisory Board, and a, a classic article from them highlights that information that is presented in a storytelling format is 20 times more likely to be retained than just facts that are presented in a linear fashion. So I think that for us to advance humanity, as you elegantly stated, both Max and, and Bruce, is to find that connectivity between scientific innovation and humanity. We think that scientists sometimes are out of touch, physicians are out of touch, in how we communicate, but to find new ways to tell stories of hope and of gratitude and to showcase the new wave of patient advocates like, like Mags. So anyway, back to you, Mags. I would love to hear any additional thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience, whether it's about music, songwriting, cancer, innovation, anything you'd like to share, I would love to hear that. Um, well, since I put out the artwork for Ring That Bell, I'm just blown away by, about the amount of people that are writing to me, emailing me, messaging me. It's it's really overwhelming. Like some of these, I suppose, patients, um, families that have passed away, some are with us today and reading their stories really has touched me. And it's made me realize that, you know, the song is actually helping people. Um, and if I can just, again, make people happy in any way, I'd be only delighted to help and help um, also the Emily Whitehead uh, Foundation. Um, Emily, I got to meet her when I was in Dublin and just that story alone and what they've done, groundbreaking for that and seeing other patients come through and um, whatever I can do to help, I'll, I'll do the best I can. So, um, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And where could our listeners or our viewers, where can they find Ring That Bell? So it's coming out on May 2nd. Okay. Um, I'm really excited. And Bruce is too. And everyone around me connected. The, the, the people that did all the music with me as well. They're all really, really excited. It'll be on Spotify, iTunes. So we'd be delighted if you could download it and share it and, you know, get the word out there. And we we'll bring awareness and a lot of hope for people. I think we all live every day for hope. And we all want to live as long as we can. So um, it's important, I think, that we bring hope to families that are going through their journey with their situation. So, um, yeah, ring that bell. I hope every single person will ring that bell. Yes, very well said. And uh, Dr. Levine, do you have uh, any closing thoughts you would like to share with our audience? Well, the, the, the story, the reason behind the song is we want to save more souls. Uh, we want to help save more souls. There's now an urgency greater than ever to advocate for funding of biomedical research. That includes federal and state funding, philanthropy, industry partnerships, um, uh, other mechanisms. And finally, scientists and clinicians, we owe our sincere gratitude to patients and families who volunteer for our clinical trials. Without them, we'd not be able to make progress in the development of new medicines. And we hope the message of the song resonates with them and, and everyone and raises awareness of the real world impact of biomedical research. And I'd also like to thank you, Sophia, for choosing to have us on your show. 
Well, thank you. I couldn't help myself. I did see your LinkedIn post about Ring That Bell, and I was like, what are the chances that this brilliant scientist is now a songwriter? So that was really an inspiration yeah. for me because I always try to connect the dots between this beautiful work that we do and humanizing that process because it allows us to meet amazing people like you, Mags, and to expand our reach and our impact on a global scale. So I am grateful to you both for the opportunity to speak today and to celebrate the many different ways we can express scientific innovation. So thank you both. Thank you so much, Sophia, for having me on your podcast. And to all your listeners, um, really appreciate it. And I hope they all will enjoy Ring That Bell. And yeah. thanks to Yes. Yeah. Thank, so <laughs> thank you. Don't forget to ring that bell. It comes out on May 2nd, available on all platforms. And Dr. Levine, any last thoughts? <laughs> well, the crazy thought is happening, which is we're working on a music video, so that will follow. <laughs> oh, that will be awesome. Now, now that's a great, great, great uh, concept. I can't wait to hear more about that. So thank you for sharing all of this. Thank you both. And this has been the season five debut of Amplifying Stanford Innovation. Thank you for joining. Don't forget to subscribe, to share, and to keep the message going, Amplifying Scientific Innovation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sophia. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>